Okay, what is cooperativity? Lot of slides are there, it is written form, I will explain very briefly first here. Okay. The moment one of the oxygen binds like this, okay, how it binds? It binds like this, iron porphyrin site, iron sorry, por iron porphyrin site, this is imidazole, that is the deoxyhemoglobin no oxygen is there. This is the other histidine that I am talking over here, which is for, okay, this is the reduced form, oxygen binds with it and what happens, this is the oxy form, oxyhemoglobin and there is a hydrogen bonding. Okay. Now, the moment it binds, this is definitely going to come one from the, or the other in the exam what happens? This iron in the deoxy form is re in reduced form, okay. both the structure we are discussing only iron 2 plus, no iron 3 plus, iron 2 plus. Iron 2 plus, see this is not a very good ligand, it is too far, it is not going to bind. You have a porphyrin ring and a imidazole. This is iron 2 plus high spin. It is a high spin configuration and this iron is not really in the plane. So, if the porphyrin plane is here, iron is sitting half in half out, it is not into that cavity perfectly. So, as you can see, you can see the iron on top, it is of course, little bit in the cavity, but it is on the little top. Okay. It is not really inside the porphyrin cavity. What is the porphyrin cavity we were say showing? Here, this is the cavity, right. Now, this is iron 2 plus in high spin form. The moment oxygen binds, okay, the moment oxygen binds over here, it goes to low spin form. So, it is now an octahedral complex perfect or not perfect, it is a very good octahedral complex, right. And you know that iron 2 plus high spin means what? D4, sorry, T2G4, EG2. Upon the oxygen binding, it goes to T2G6, EG0. T2G4, EG2, this is T2G6, high spin to low spin configuration change. The moment high spin to low spin configuration change is there, so there is T2G EG, all of a sudden there is no, no electron in EG and therefore, what happens is the repulsion of the ligand becomes less and the size of the iron decreases. So, in this case iron 2 high spin is larger in size, low spin is little bit shorter in size little bit shorter, that is good enough, that means it will go into the cavity in the porphyrin and thereby there is that, that pull, that is a structural change. So, this imidazole you can see it was bind or it is bind with the iron center and it is like big, iron center is big, the moment it gets shortened, it just, so it is over here, iron is here. It you make it little shorter and then it pull in, that change, it is over here, it goes down, that change, that change will trigger the cooperativity. What will happen? The moment it gets pulled in the cavity, that change in configuration or conformation will be relayed all over. That will send the message the moment one oxygen binds in here, it pulls in or it passes the information and this guy knows that oxygen is available and it almost again this guy undergoes high spin to low spin configuration change, oxygen comes and sit down. 
it happens to here, it pulls in again it relayed, it relayed. So, the activation barrier or how much energy you need to put for the first oxygen is always going to be high. The moment you are able to bind the first oxygen, second, third, fourth is going to be less, less and less. It is it's just a relay, I mean you are having a 1600 meter race let us say. It is it's just gets relayed very fast. If there is a message that oxygen is there, the high spin to low spin change is happening. Oxygen binds, oxygen binds high spin iron 2 plus goes to low spin iron 2 plus, it gets reduced in size, it gets pulled in the pocket of porphyrin, that little change, it is a very subtle change, it gets communicated with the next porphyrin center. That next porphyrin center binds oxygen, it gets communicated next one, it gets communicated next one. So, the that is cooperativity, they are cooperating, they are you know working in tandem, they are very good communicator, they are communicating with each other. Okay. Now, that is cooperativity, it is very nicely also written in the slide form, I will come, come, I will may not discuss way too much afterwards. Okay. Now, so how the binding happening? This is oxygen, these are let us say these are ox oxygen to electrons, it is metal uh, sorry ligand to metal bonding is happening, okay. it gives to the dz2 orbital the axial position, right. it gives to dz2 and from dzx orbital it donates back to the oxygen pi star orbital. Right. So, it is a back bonding, it is it's forward bonding and then back bonding, that means that the binding is going to be good, it is it's of course, you know it is not too tight, but it is good. Iron center will bind with the oxygen decent amount, that is that is occupied means field one will be donating and then there will be back donation, okay. we will not get into too much details of that. Now, this is what exactly, this is what exactly I tried to say, I will just briefly go through the slides, it will be provided to you in the Moodle, so I will be going directly. Now, iron 2 plus, this is high spin paramagnetic, of course it is high spin paramagnetic, right, because it is T 2 G 4 E G 2, high spin, right, iron 2 plus paramagnetic T 2 G 4 E G 2. The moment oxygen binds, it becomes low spin diamagnetic T 2 G 6 E G 0, no unpaired electron, yeah. No, it is not really octahedral, but it is um, you know, it, but still there is a loose coordination as I was showing this histidine is there. The moment it is there, it is of course, the sixth coordination side is almost vacant. It is not 100 percent vacant, almost vacant. Okay. Now, of course, you can see that this information iron 2 plus 2, this iron 2 plus, I mean not really deoxyhemoglobin to oxyhemoglobin changes, this will also have some effect in the spectroscopic behavior. Okay. What we are not discussing here is right after oxygen binding, iron oxidation state also changes. Iron 2, 2, 2 goes to iron 3 plus, oxygen becomes superoxo, reduced by one electron. That we are not discussing, you do not have to write in the exam, do not write in the exam. Oxygen gets reduced by one electron, that is called superoxo. What we have discussed here is paroxo, and iron 2 plus gets oxidized to iron 3 plus. That is a reversible process means it can go forward and then come backward as well. Anyway, now these due to these all these changes will get a spectroscopic difference. The color or if you if you measure before oxygen binding and after oxygen binding, the spectra of the compound will be different. Based on that, we can measure 
how much oxygen is bound. Let's say some people, you know, suffer from, you know, this uh, less oxygen delivery to certain part of body. That is bad, right? So maybe enough for firing center are not there. Okay. So how much, let's say, at a certain body part, how much oxygen is there that you can calculate? It's a very simple test. You take the blood or you, you take some site specific reaction or site specific study, a specific area you just see or, or in general you can figure out how much is there. So, oxygen, how much oxygen content is there from, from this spectroscopic change you can find out. That is what you know pulse oximeter is. Okay? You can just read and understand nothing in there. Now, what happens when oxygen binds to hemoglobin? I think I have discussed already. So, high spin goes to low spin. Okay? All the information is covered. So, this phenomenon is called cooperativity. For your exam purpose, these are the slides, the exactly same thing what I have said without looking at this slide, that those informations are there. You read it. Okay. Now, see uh, there are some slides, I will take 5 to 10 minutes to discuss. This is for your general understanding. Well, the problem is, the, I, I, let me, in one minute, let me discuss the problem. So, all other section, whoever are the, you know, instructor, they have discussed it. Okay? So, I have to discuss it. Okay? Simple. But I will give this slide in this form, so you decide how much you want to read, how much you do not want to read. I have given, it is for your information, I am very clearly saying, I think we are not going to, I mean most likely, 90 percent guarantee, maybe some information, understanding may be tested, but not in deeper level. Okay? Let me get into that. You will see it is not that boring. Okay. All right. All, let me go to the next slide. It is interesting, right? Right. All right. Um, we do know that our blood is red. Then there are some animals, some other species, which who has blue blood. These are not demons, not in movies, the blue blooded. There are cold blooded people, okay, but these are blue blooded animals. Okay. So, the reason why, I, this is again not for exam, I mean give me 5 minutes, I will finish it. It is important that you understand, okay. never you are going to look back perhaps ever again these things. Okay. It is important you just do understand little bit. I will discuss some little bit interesting thing, okay, including Daru, okay, uh, how it get digested. Okay. So, in, in our blood, we have, we have this porphyrin center, right? Iron center. These other cases, we, in lot of other animals or some, some of these, uh, you know, these uh, marine invertebrates, they do not have the blood or so-called blood as we see in red. Because they have, of course, they have to ha take oxygen. I mean, all we are saying is these are the oxygen carrier protein. The way they carry the oxygen is little bit different. Instead of iron center, there you have copper centers. Those or these porphyrin iron center, instead of those, you have I copper centers. That gives it blue color. So, there are some, some of these ox hemocyanin or some of the animals are there, some of the species are there which have blue blood, right. At the end of this class, we will be discussing tutorial part. These are the one where we have, again slide will be given, I think uh, I may not be allowed too much, but it is okay. Uh, so, there you will be saying the blue blood, okay. There you will be saying the, seeing the violet, okay, violet pink color, due to the fact that the ligand is different or the metal is different or both is different. 
ok. Therefore, although oxygen binds mode of binding is different ok. Now, these are the slide amino acid peptides and protein you know it amino acids is something like this acid and the amine part amino acid put together is protein backbone right and these are different amino acid we are talking aspartic acid, glutamic acid, lysine, serine, cysteine lot of I am not asking you to memorize, but if I think 3, 4 amino acid you must know this is your responsibility if someone is asking question I cannot help ok. So, few amino acid you must know and you know that is how the peptide backbone is formed and then those peptide backbone can have the hydrogen bonding or interlinked or cross linked and thereby they can form the you know 3D structure ok. That is I think you have studied in biology or somewhere or you just essentially understand how it forms fine. Next is enzyme substrate complex I will take you here enzyme substrate complex is what you have a organic compound organic you have taken you see lot of carbon hydrogen bonds are there and if that organic compound is getting functionalized let us say hydroxylated lot of possibilities are there right only a particular carbon hydrogen bond gets functionalized how does that happen that happens because let us say you have a porphyrin center or a iron center in front of that whole organic molecule is there it is not like that only a particular carbon hydrogen bond gets exposed or comes very close to the active site that metal active site metalloenzyme and therefore, even if you have all those carbon hydrogen bond or carbon hydrogen bond covalent bond present all those hydroxylation products are possible only selectively one carbon hydrogen bond gets functionalized because that is how it gets exposed not these are getting functionalized only let us say this is getting functionalized hydroxylated you see only one particular CH is getting hydroxylated. Now, that is called substrate binding pocket substrate comes in there is metal binding pocket there is substrate binding pocket substrate comes in and sits in there and the metal is there and the chemistry happens ok. Now, so enzyme and substrate interaction those E S complex we are saying this is where you know the substrate is bound by relatively weak forces substrate is not going to bind bound that organic substrate let us say is not going to be bound very strongly they forms weak complexes ok. Another important thing is to understand enzyme is huge not everywhere it is binding substrate there is only a specific center where it binds right. Now, rest of the things may not be involved in catalysis this is the reaction we are trying to tell, tell is catalysis right it is a it is a reaction happening rest of the protein backbone or peptide backbone we are not seeing much of a role in the substrate binding only a particular site or particular place substrate comes in sits in there and the enzyme or let us say metalloenzyme does the chemistry the or the catalysis part. So, something about the enzyme substrate complex is given in the slide it is a very easy to understand I am once again I do not expect you to memorize all these you know these things these are not of much of use for the course purpose, but you try to flip through give yourself 10, 15, 20 minutes some idea wise if some question is coming you should not be complaining. We are not going to ask you to draw peptide bond ok right anyway now let us move on ah, this is one of the thing I was trying to tell you synthetically see if this is the umbrella like structure you see the umbrella is forming over here ok. Now, oxygen is prevented in the synthetic system oxygen is that is how prevented from reacting at the other center that is that is you know that is just a view you see that how people make the porphyrin functionalized porphyrin from porphyrin backbone how people put the umbrella 
and put the oxygen in a protected manner, it is protecting. Okay. Hey, whoever is not interested, please be my guest, leave it okay. or do not be my guest. Now, carbonic anhydride, there are certain enzyme, okay. this is called one of the enzyme called carbonic anhydride that has zinc site at the middle. Now, it is coordinated with histidine, histidine, histidine and water. What it does? It converts carbon dioxide into carbonate. Okay. How it does? Again, you do not have to memorize, you just see one time, it is a very easy organic chemistry I am talking about. You have zinc hydroxo formation, zinc water to zinc water was there okay. and three histidine was there, these are the ligand for zinc 2 plus, zinc is redox inactive, zinc 2 plus stays zinc 2 plus, water gets deprotonated. Water itself deprotonation will not be easy, but the moment it binds with this Lewis acid, zinc 2 plus acts as a Lewis acid, the acidity it becomes highly acidic, this OH bond, deprotonation become easier. Water itself under the physiological condition, it will not let us say undergo deprotonation. Now, the moment water binds with the zinc 2 plus, zinc 2 plus is a Lewis acid and thereby you will have an opportunity to deprotonate. The moment the hydroxy forms, carbon dioxide can be attacked by this hydroxy and then you can form the carbonate. So, see sodium bicarbonate, it is something like that. So, carbon dioxide forming carbon bicarbonate or carbonate. Okay. So, that is the carbonic anhydrase activity. It carbon dioxide reacts with water, it is a simple reaction, but it is not that very easy at all. I mean you take carbon dioxide gas, put water, how can you react? But simple zinc site can do the wonder, it is catalysis, very very good. I mean these are all happening in our body man, come on, it is very important. Okay. Now, then the peptide back bond cleavage, of course, you know how to cleave a amide peptide bond, it is an amide linkage, right? hydrolysis you need to do. But this hydrolysis in organic chemistry, what you learn, it may not be efficient, may not be fast, okay? it is slow enough. But the moment you have this zinc site, this cleavage becomes easy, okay? it's, it cleaves actually in a similar manner. So, this hydroxo this zinc hydroxo that forms over there, this zinc hydroxo attack over there, of course, let us say base catalyzed hydrolysis of amide is possible. It is a amide bond is there, you put a base a nucleophile attack at that center and it gives you an acid part from here and amine from here, right. It is a hydrolysis, ester hydrolysis you have studied. It is a amide hydrolysis, but that amide hydrolysis is very slow under you know physiological condition. But the moment zinc site is there, zinc hydroxo forms due to zinc being the Lewis acid, deprotonation becomes easier, deprotonation of water becomes easier, that zinc hydroxy can do this wonder. Okay. If you drink, if you drink alcohol, your liver will be damaged. Why? It is very simple reason, right? Your liver is going to be damaged. That is mainly all, first to remind you, ethanol is the one which is used as alcohol to drink, not the methanol. The methanol you drink, again I will see you, okay. All right. So, why ethanol and then how our body digest it or breaks it? It is not good for our body, it is a foreign object, we get high, but that is why we drink, okay. But or well, not necessarily, I do not promote, just like movies, any actor does not promote any of these, these, these. I do not promote anything, I am not promoting anything and that is a very serious note, it is an academic institution. Okay. Now, now, so how, although definitely people drink alcohol, that is a fact, how body digest it? What happens? Alcohol, ethanol, CH3, CH2, OH, ethanol is converted to acetaldehyde CH3CHO, alcohol oxidation to aldehyde happens and then aldehyde gets chopped off to carbon dioxide, 
and water and so on. That's another enzyme. The first step, ethanol to aldehyde formation, that happens in here. The enzyme called LAD, liver alcohol dehydrogenase. It's nothing but, once again, it's a zinc enzyme. Okay? Alcohol, if that's why liver gets damaged. If the enzyme is not working, which is at the liver, that enzyme is not working, of course, our body will not have the ability to dispel carbon, I mean, dispel the alcohol from our body, right? If liver alcohol dehydrogenase is not working, that enzyme is not working, alcohol becomes toxic for us. I mean, of course, it's toxic, but it becomes even more toxic, right? It's, it could be deadly. I mean, if someone has, it is deadly. Yeah, you, you do see the news. Someone has liver which is damaged and keep on consuming alcohol, of course, right? Uh, so this is how it happened. It's a little bit different mechanism. I will not, you don't have to remember again. What happens over here is, this is the pyridine ring you are seeing. It's called nicotinamide. Well, something like similar moiety is there in your uh, cigarette also. Nicotine. Okay. I'll find, let's stop there. So this hydride, so zinc center binds with the alcohol, R in CH3, methyl CH2OH, now gets deprotonated. And this hydride gets transferred to the spiridine ring. It's a, this is the, this is the center which is helping and the enzyme is zinc enzyme, okay? Zinc center with three of them, zinc center with all those coordinates and the alcohol bind in here. And the way alcohol is converted to aldehyde is shown is there. It is a hydride transfer mechanism, simple organic reaction. But without this enzyme, you can understand this process will not happen and it doesn't happen. That is also true for a lot of, lot of these, um, you know, East Asian people, like Chinese people, Korean people, you see the moment they drink alcohol, their whole body goes red, not all of them, some of them. Fortunately for us, we are, most of us are, a lot of us are, not most of, a lot of us are brown, so we, we do not show up that much. All Chinese, a lot of Chinese people, a lot of Korean people, South Korean people, as far as at least I have seen, actually they do not have this enzyme sufficient amount. Of course, how, how you, your, you know, it, 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 it goes back to your gene. It goes back to your evolution or the, the you know, your generation, how it has come. See, you know, that's, that's how, if the enzyme is not there in enough quantity, what will happen is it, it, they are not able to digest or take much amount of alcohol, little bit is good enough for them, their you know, body gets you know, swollen or red colored. It's just like almost like an allergic symptom it showed up. Of course, some of us can have the exactly same symptom if your body or if your liver is not having this enzyme. Anyway, enough for that. So this is some information about the cisplatin, how much money you can make you can be a trillionaire, a billionaire dollars, not rupees, okay? You can, you can be, of course, rupees is good enough. You can be, if you have discovered a good drug, if you have discovered a good catalytic reaction, simple thing I didn't discuss. Let's say water to hydrogen production. That's another enzyme, since the class is only one, we didn't discuss that. There is an enzyme which can convert water to ox hydrogen, right? Water splitting. Now, if you happen to have a good catalyst for that, you know this is fuel, right? Fuel, lots of fuel. Let's say if you have an enzyme, there is enzyme, if, if you can convert, let's say, methane to methanol, that's a trillion dollar project. If you have a good catalyst, enzyme does this thing routinely. Enzyme is very good at doing this, methane to methanol. 
I am giving you target. You pick up, be bill trillionaire, give me some money back. Okay. Um, these are, these are uh, ideas. Okay. Methane to methanol. You produce hydrogen. Okay. This lot of simple reaction which nature does. It could be in our body. It could be somewhere else. If you can do develop a good system, catalytic system for them. I mean, nothing can stop you from being rich. Okay. It has to be efficient. Okay. It has to be industrially viable. Industry has to buy your technique. Chemistry can be rewarding too. Okay. All right. Tutorial. Tutorial. What are storage and transport protein? We have discussed. Storage protein stores things. Transport protein transports things. The answer is given over here. Answer is given here. Here, if you give me an opportunity, I will, I will wait for you. Why cyanide is toxic? We have discussed again. The binding site over here for oxygen will be occupied by cyanide, and thereby it is toxic. And you cannot, that's an irreversible process. You cannot change it. Okay. So, what is the role of globular protein in oxygen transport? It's nothing. It prevents the dimerization. It prevents oxygen, you know, iron center to get further oxidized and other side reaction it prevents. Okay. Lot of side reaction can happen. That can be prevented by this globular protein. What is cooperativity? Everybody knows by now, right? If you didn't understand, Go through this stepwise, okay? It is fine. Now, why are all the oxygen carriers that contain iron and porphyrins found inside the cell? Why inside the cell? Outside the cell is very ox oxidative atmosphere. Iron can be oxidized irreversibly to iron three plus. Then you cannot have them used for oxygen carrier, right? Why is the size of high spin iron 2 plus is larger than low spin iron 2? We say that high spin to low spin T2G4 EG2 to low spin you are going to T2G6. EG is out. EG out means lot of repulsion is out and the cell is becoming smaller or sorry not cell. Iron center is becoming smaller. High spin to low spin size varies. Size gets smaller. Okay? It is written over there. What prevents synthetic iron porphyrins from functioning as a oxygen carrier? We have discussed this umbrella thing we are talking. Don't write umbrella, okay? And this is just for explanation. Uh, you can write. If I am checking, you can get marks. If I am not, you don't get marks. So, okay. It, it, it prevents dimerization. Dimerization we have talked. Iron 2 plus and, and 2 iron center can give one one electron to the oxygen, oxygen will be reduced to peroxide and this dimer formation. See some of these term you must write if you, if this question is asked, the first thing will be it will, pre it prevents dimerization. Even if you explain a lot of things, you do not say that it prevents dimerization, you are not going to get the mark hopefully. Okay. Why CO is toxic? We have discussed. Ah, yes, you know that. While the cisplatin is potent anti-cancer agent, its trans isomer is not. Yes, that is cisplatin, that is transplatin, uh, transplatin and how it binds we were discussing. Right? So, see the two guanine for example are binding. So, actually sorry, here actually chloride is going up, going out. Okay. All right. Okay. So, this is are you convinced? Are you convinced? I don't think so. Okay. Are you convinced with the statement that the coordination complexes are capable of acting as drugs? I think you better be com convinced. Okay. There are medicine I am sure some of you are taking or some of us are taking, all of us are taking at some time of our life which has metal in it. Okay. I think, oh, I, I forgot. I do have jokes, but I cannot tell you now. But I will leave you with this. Okay, this is the last slide. A message from, uh, you know, oh, right.